Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Welcome to this Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to be doing the Pokemon style movement system. Now if you don't know what this is, this has been a feature that has been requested in my comment section, my Facebook page, my Twitter account, my personal email, on pretty much every video and every place that I exist on the internet to date, someone has asked me to make a video about this and I'm going to do it today. So if you don't know what it is, Pokemon style movement works on a grid, so that if the character is on say a chest board the character can actually only move in those um, in those board pieces so in, in our case our game is going to be using 32 by 32 size tiles and the player can only move like this in giant 32 by 32 size chunks but we need that to happen smoothly and we also need to be able we also need to be able to maintain uh, the key presses for the player's movement as well and it's kind of hard to do so I'm gonna create this video and show you guys what I've done to um, achieve this system now before I start, I'll just let you know I've already set up some basic stuff. I've got a room here. It has a grass tile set as a background. I've also enabled the use of views and I've put my player object on that room. Now, that's all I've done for this tutorial. There are sprites which I've loaded in, which are just three frame animation sprites from RPG Maker VX Ace. And I've also centered those sprites. And that is all I've done. So just to speed up the beginning of this tutorial, I've just set up a very basic project, which you can use this in your own game, however you feel like. Now that we're in the object player, let's begin by creating a create event, <laughs> creating a create event. Um, and we're gonna drag a code segment into that. I think Game Maker calls these something else. Let's have a quick look. They are called code, they're called execute code. You'll find those under the control tab and then under the code section, execute code. I'm gonna drag one of them into the create event and you'll get this window here. I'm gonna give this a name. I'm gonna say initialize the player. I know I spelled that wrong, but I don't care. Um, and we're going to declare a couple of variables in here. The first one is going to be target underscore X. Target X is going to be equal to X. We're going to do that for target Y. Target underscore Y. It's going to be equal to Y. Then we're going to have another one that says moving equals false, because by default, when the game starts, the player won't be moving. Finally, I'm going to have one that says image underscore speed equals zero. And what this line here is going to do is it's actually going to turn off the animations so we won't have any animation for the player. Now let me go back and explain what target X and target Y are doing. When the game loads, we are basically storing the player's position in some temporary variables so that when we come to actually dealing with moving the player around the map, we're going to be able to see whether or not the player is at the position they're trying to get to or whether or not they have further to go. And I'll explain a little bit more of that after, but for now, let's just quickly run our game and make sure that everything is okay. And as you can see, the animation is not playing. We have a player on the screen and it is centered inside of this border. Now let's create a step event in our object player and drag a code segment into that. For this, I'm going to have a title saying um, handle player movement. Then I'm going to have three subtitles. The first one's going to be called move the player. The second subtitle is going to be called um, check for destination. Destination. I think I spelled that wrong as well, but again, I don't care. And the third one we're going to have is called handle input. So I'm going to start off kind of going backwards here, but we're going to do the handle input section first because that's what matters most at this point in time. So in order to handle input, we need to first detect whether or not the player is pushing a button. If the player is pushing a button and they're not moving, so moving is set to false, then we need to set moving to false and update their target position. So I'll show you how we do that. It's very simple. We say if, then we say inside our if statement, we say if uh, keyboard underscore check, there it is, check, and it's going to be VK left. I'm going to do the left key first. And the player is not moving. So I'm just going to say not moving. That's going to invert it. So if moving was set to false, then not moving is going to be true. Um, you don't need to worry how that, how, that, how that works at the moment, but basically just trust me, it will work. Uh, so if the player is pressing the left key and the player is not moving, then we need to say that the player is now going to be moving. So we say moving equals true. Then we need to say target underscore X minus equals 32 because we're going to head into, the, we're going to head 32 pixels in the left direction. So minus 32 pixels. 
Then we can also say image underscore speed equals 0 0.3. Now this is just a, a number that I plucked out of my head. You can use whatever number you like here, but I think 0 0.3 works good for my, for my sprites. Um, and finally, I'm gonna say sprite underscore index equals SPR underscore player underscore left. Now that's gonna set the image of our sprite to the, to the left image of our sprite that I've got set up here. So that's the first case for handling the left key press. What about the right key press? Well, it's very simple. We simply check for the right key and then we increment target X by 32 rather than subtract. And then we update our image to say right. And again, we do the same, we do the same if statements for up and down now. So we just say if up and not moving, then we say target Y negative 32. So target Y negative equals 32. So we're gonna subtract 32 pixels from the targets Y. So if you imagine target as where we want to get to, we're not quite there yet, but we want to get there. So we're gonna say negative 32 pixels. Uh, and again, we'll update our image to say this time up since we're gonna be moving up. And finally for down, it's the same thing except in reverse. Target Y is going to be plus equals 32 and the image is going to be down. Now, if I just uh, close this off and run the game right now, it will be a little bit buggy, but you should be able to see the player updating its direction and the animation speed is uh, pretty good. Obviously we can't move in any other directions yet because the player hasn't reached the direction, the target that they're trying to get to. So back in our step event, let's begin adding our move the player clause. So in this clause, this is very simple. We simply say if target underscore X is greater than X. So if the target X variable is greater than the place that we currently are, then we need to move the player towards that. So we just say X plus equals, and then a number that you can divide into 32. So I'm gonna use the number four because you can go four, eight, uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on, all the way up to 32. If the number doesn't, if the number doesn't divide into 32 evenly, this won't work. So you could use like two, you can use four, you can use eight, you can use 16, and uh, I think that's it. So I'm gonna use four for my, for my movement. I'm gonna do the same thing for the left direction. So I'm gonna put a comment on the end here and say that this is right. I add a comment here and say that this is left. And for left, we simply say if target X is less than X, so now we say X minus equals four. And we need to do the same thing for the uh, Y axis as well. So I'm gonna say if the Y is greater than, so if target Y is greater than Y, then the Y position needs to be plus equals Y. So that's gonna be down. And finally, if target Y is less than your current Y position, then Y negative equals four, and we're gonna be moving in the upwards direction. Now there is a slight bug here and the problem is when you push up, you're gonna be setting this moving variable to true. And from then on, until you reach your target destination, uh, well, you won't reach your target destination, you'll just keep moving forever. I'll actually demonstrate that really quickly. I'll, I'll run the game and you'll see what I mean. So if I push up, you'll see that I move endlessly forever. I don't move endlessly forever because what happens is target Y actually is no longer greater than Y, but the the statement never resets itself, therefore you can't continue to move. So what we need to do is add a final check just to make sure that we have reached our destination and then we allow the player to move again. So we can say something like, if target underscore X equals equals X, so if target X is equal to your X position and target Y is equal to your Y position, then we can simply say, moving equals false, because we're no longer moving if we've reached our destination. Now what will happen is we'll reach our destination, then the following statements will check. One of these will be met if the key was pressed, and then moving will be set to true again, and the target position will be updated, and then in the next step, we'll be moving again. So you'll actually see no delay when this happens. So moving will be set to false, We'll also say image speed equals zero because we've stopped moving. But like I said, if you're still holding the left key, then this statement will fire and you'll be, you'll be, your target position will be updated, your image speed will be reset and your direction will be updated accordingly as, as well. So I'm gonna save that and give that a run. And hopefully if all went well, we should be able to move in all directions, just like a Pokemon game. So you'll see if I tap the up button, we move 32 pixels up. If I tap the left button, we move 32 pixels left. If I tap the down button, we move 32 pixels down. And finally, if I tap the right button, we move 32 pixels wide. Also, if I hold the button, you'll see there's no delay and 
we are moving on a grid. If I let go of the button, the player will snap to the nearest 32, um, 32 pixels. Now this works with all sprite sizes. You will have to adjust the numbers um, according to your own games. However, this will work perfectly with all, all games. Now I know this isn't the most optimal, um, optimal method to do this. However, it's a very simple and straightforward way of achieving this kind of movement system. And it's actually not that bad. I mean, we have a couple of if statement checks in here, but no more than any other game has really. Um, there are more efficient ways to do this, but it doesn't matter in this day and age. Realistically, this is a perfectly valid implementation of the Pokemon style movement system. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm gonna leave this code segment on the screen for a little bit so that you guys can see it, copy it down, take notes, do whatever you normally do when you watch these videos. And uh, just like to leave you guys with a message. I hope you guys have seen some of my Let's Play videos um, recently. So if you do see some of those let's play videos come through your um subscription center then please jump into them and just give them a like and you know if you like them leave a comment if you don't like them then you know you'd be really helping me out if you actually did come in and just leave a like it's going to help me grow my channel to a point that i'll be able to do these um game plays and tutorials more often uh than i am currently doing them now so if you do see those videos come through your stream, please give them a look and uh, tell me what you think about them because I really do appreciate all of the feedback that you guys give me. Uh, finally, just another statement that some people have asked me if the gameplay videos will be affecting the amount of time that I spend doing the programming videos. Well, that's not going to happen because normally what happens is I play games a lot anyway. The only difference now is that I've decided to start recording and uploading them. So the amount of time that I usually dedicate to recording tutorial videos and videos of such nature is uh, remaining the same. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and don't forget to like the video, leave comments, questions, feedback in the comment section below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.